All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I'm delighted to be joined by Gabrielle Dolan, or Rail as she likes to be called, who is in Melbourne in Australia. How are you doing, Rail? I am good, John. Yes, it was a, my name's Gabrielle, but my younger sister couldn't really pronounce my name and would always say Gabrielle, Rao. And so <laughs> Rao has stuck. So everyone calls me Rao. Well, I know it's, it's, it's great. Um, and obviously it's, it's tomorrow for you. So I love talking to people from the future. It's always great. Yeah, I can, I can tell you what's happened the last 12 <laughs> yes, hours. Exactly. Um, and Ral has written many books, including the latest one, Magnetic Stories, which is uh, connecting customers and engaging employees with brand storytelling. And that's kind of what we want to talk about today is how you can use brand storytelling to connect and engage with customers or prospective customers and how you can even get your employees to be brand amb ambassadors. So um, talk to me a little bit about, you know, the genesis of this book and, and why you call it Magnetic Stories. Yeah, look, I, so it's, it is my sixth book. For the last 16 years, I've been working with businesses to help their leaders share stories to better communicate. And it's normally it's normally had a bit of an internal focus. So how do you do connect and engage employees like with your, with your values and so how you share personal stories around that. But more increasingly, it's like how do we share them to connect and engage with customers as well. So I... Um, the, I guess the genesis of the book was that I, this concept of brand storytelling, so how do we communicate our brand through stories, I saw a lot of uh, people talking about it. And what I noticed is that they were not doing it very well. Um, they would call something a story that wasn't a story. So, you know, they would go, oh, this is our brand story. And I was like, first of all, there's not just one story that communicates your brand. And second of all, it's not a story. It's a timeline, for example. So I saw a lot of companies doing it incorrectly I also saw or heard a lot of stories that companies had and weren't sharing them and weren't sharing them because either they didn't understand the power of story or they didn't quite know how or they didn't think anyone would be interested or they were a small company trying to sound bigger so stop sharing their you know creation story so I saw all this happening and, and thought I'd write the book the um the name of the book. So naming your book, John, is one of the biggest decisions and almost the hardest yeah. decisions you make. I always have a working title that never, ever makes it to the final cut. And this was no different. Um, I knew the concept of the book. The concept of a book was once you heard a story, it, you know, it's sort of like you connected with it straight yeah. away and it was hard to pull away from. So I was thinking of of, the, of something that would demonstrate that, and I and I came up with magnetic stories where you know it's like a magnet. It's like it it's, yeah. it's, it can be this instant instant connection that then then it's really hard to pull away from. And a good story will do that. Yeah, no, that's excellent. And I just want to come back to the point you made there a moment ago because uh, when most people hear about oh you know storytelling or telling stories about your brand, I think people kind of intellectually get the idea. But on a practical level, a lot of people don't really know what a story is or what are the characteristics of a story or how you would even use it. Mm, yeah. And again, you, you, you've just got to look at a lot of websites have changed their about us page to our story. And if you go and look, I guarantee you nine times out of 10, it's not a story. It's, it's just a timeline, um, but they've called it a story or it's just a paragraph full of jargon and acronyms. And you go, that's not a story either. So yeah, it's just what actually is a story. So, so what is your definition of it? When you, when you work with, with clients, um, how do you define a story? So to, to me, a story has to have that human element connection. It's, it's got to be about someone. So that's why a case study is not a story. You know, what, what we've done and how we did it and the results is not a story. It's got to, to me, and to me in business, there's a lot of things in business that it's got to be pretty succinct so people get the message straight away. Um, storytelling in business, it's sort of got to have one message per story, so not trying to deliver everything in one story, but it has to have this human element that helps people connect with it emotionally and when I say emotionally I'm not talking about getting all emotional but a good mm. story will tap into emotion and as humans 
we are emotional beings and and one of the, the problem the, one of the challenges in business is we have this you know um, bias towards data and logic and we try to communicate and influence people through data and logic and you still need that but ultimately we're humans and we make mm-hmm. decisions based on emotion yeah and it's also interesting uh, something that you just mo- mentioned a moment ago and that is Sometimes when people write what they think are stories, there's about 50 different points in it, or they're, as you said, they're covering a timeline or whatever. And let's face it, I mean, as humans, we're not very good at, uh, at taking on board too much at once. So really focusing in on the central point is, is critical. So what are some of those, when you work with your clients, what are some of those central points that you try to help them focus in on that maybe can help them tell a story that people would be interested in? Yeah, look, the whole concept of brand storytelling to me is sharing stories about your brand. And Mm -hmm. there's going to be lots of lots of people go, well, what is brand? To me is a brand is and when we talk about a company and it's also an individual, it's it's the what what are your values? What what are your behaviors? So if what do you want to be known for? So as an individual or as as an individual, if you want to be known um, as integrity, like has integrity, then first of all, you've got to do that. But what stories can you share that demonstrate that? So um, it's the same with the company. The same, what do you want to be known for? And normally what we, we talk about, what we not want to be known for, a company will have its values. So we've, we've gone through all this work to say these are our values and these are our behaviours um, that, you know, we want to reinforce. To me, you have to break each one of those down. So if you want to be known for customer service, What does that mean? What does that truly mean? And being clear on what that means and then finding a whole heap of stories that demonstrate that. So it's not just one story and it's not, it's, it's a collection of stories that continually add to that. So how are you, you know, let's just take, you want to be known for delivering great customer service. How are you finding stories of your employees delivering great customer service? How are you communicating those stories internally so everyone else understands what we mean by great customer service and maybe there's a handful of them that you can share externally as well you know making your employees the hero so sharing stories is part of it then actually doing stuff like you know you can't just share stories about how you deliver great customer service but don't do it you've actually got to do it as well yeah, no, I was going to say that. I mean, you have to, yeah, you, you, it's the experience has to match the words at the end yeah, of the day. And absolutely. I do think that that's, and when you do that work with customers sometimes and even coming up with their values, because I do think, again, sometimes people, it, it can be, it's very abstract or they get all caught up in this vision, mission, values, principle, you know, what do we have here? Instead of like keeping it, as you said, number one, keeping it simple, but second off, something that you are committed to delivering on because otherwise it's just another bumper sticker. Yeah. Look, there's um, one of the, the work, the vast majority of work I do is going into organizations and helping their people communicate the values, what it means to them. And there's a little process I go through. And th- this can sometimes be the very senior leaders where, mm-hmm. you know, you might have those values and what you said, it's a bumper sticker. It's, it's, it's words on a wall where it could be like say integrity, for example, you know, one of our values is integrity. And I will say to someone, I'll go, so John, when you, when you look at the value integrity, your company value, what does it mean to you? Like, what does it mean to you personally? And they will sit there and go, um, well, it means, uh, means telling the truth. I go, yeah, okay, what else does it mean? And I'll go, it means, um, oh, um, gee, gee, you put me on the spot here. I haven't thought about it this much before. And and that's the problem where we've got these company values we're expecting everyone to live by, but asking them, uh, and after 20 seconds, they're saying, I haven't thought about it this much before. So the whole process is is it to remove it from the bumper sticker, remove it from words on a wall, get every individual employee truly understanding what it means to them personally and then you've got a better chance of delivering on it yeah and then obviously as part of that is um once you understand it and that is how does it reflect in the behavior and how you operate on it on a on a moment-to-moment basis and what that impact is like on others 
Absolutely. One of the cool things I did, John, is I, I do predominantly work with larger companies who sort of come to me after they've got all their purpose and mission and values and they've, they've got it all stated. I did some work with um, my accounting company, which is, a, which is a pretty small company, and they were growing and they knew what I did. So they, they sort of said, you know, the, the CEO said, I, I really think we should sort of define what our values are and then then could you help us with stories about that? And I said, yeah, I go, why, why don't we start the other way around? So we started with the story. So I got them in a room and I just asked them questions like, you know, when was the last time you felt really proud here? I, I asked them questions that elicited all these stories. And then we went and had it, they went and had a coffee break. And I just looked at these stories and went, I reckon out of all the stories I've heard, they came back. I go, I reckon these are your values. And I said them and I went, Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. They're my value. So that was a really interesting way to re-engineer um, the way we come up with values is let's start with the stories because that will tell us what our values are. Yeah, no, I love that approach because I do think sometimes there's, there's a temptation is that we want to put it, we want to put in like high high sounding things. Like, you know, we yes. want to say like, you know, integrity and things like that. But the point that the, the process that you went through it was like, OK, let's start at the other end and let's see how you actually operate on a on a day to day basis. And then we'll tell you what your yes. principles really are, your values are. Yeah, no, exactly. I, love, I, I love that approach. Um, and how do you think it has? I mean, do you think this has always been true or do you think we're going through some kind of process now where people are? In some ways, they're they're more desperate than ever to have some kind of human or emotional connection with a brand or with a company that they're doing business with. Maybe this has been accentuated or exacerbated by by the pandemic. I think it started before that because I think technology had been used um, in some ways very good and in some ways not so good by companies. I think technology had maybe separated people a little bit from their customers. So there's a little bit of a swing back on that. But do you think there's a growing appetite for, for real connection? Yeah, I, I agree with what you've just said. I think there is a growing appetite. And I think it had started before the pandemic. It, it had started before COVID with, with what you said. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, automation, um, online, online, you know, purchasing and stuff, it, it, it started there. And so there was there was a bit of a need for a more of a human connection to to the people we were dealing with and what we were buying but I, I truly believe the pandemic has has um, brought that to the fore so I think we went through this stage where we were pretty much all physically disconnected for mm -hmm. 12 months and and more in some places and, and still going on that there was a need for this human connection so um, I, I just you know during the pandemic I the amount of new clients I received wanting to do storytelling training, knowing that A, it's a good skill to have, but B, you know, no one had seen each other for months and months and months. And this concept of, well, let's get on and learn how to share stories. And then by default, we're going to be sharing stories. There was a, there's a real need, I think, for let's just bring it back to some basic human connection. And, you know, so, yeah, I think, yeah. I think there's need for it. And, and I think the other thing is, um, and, and I'm sure you can speak to this better than me, but is it, I think sometimes people overcom try to overcomplicate things. And maybe even if you say to them stories, they'll start to overcomplicate it. But at the end of the day, we, we really connect to very simple, almost enduring, um, you know, enduring stories that have an enduring theme. Yeah, absolutely. And again, a lot of the time I, I say to people that we'll, we'll, we'll come up with a story, what it means. And they go, no, I don't have any stories because I'm just sort of normal. I go, normal's good because <laughs> we, we don't, this brand storytelling is just sort of the day-to-day -day stories that people relate to. Not, you know, not these big, amazing stories. It's just, it's it's like this enduring theme that, you know, stories of challenge and stories of hope and, you um, you know, just stories of when when we've felt uncertain or unsure of ourselves, or we've learnt lessons. So, you know, those things we all have in common story. You know, we've all done stupid stuff we regret. We've all done stuff we've learned from. We've all been given advice we never took. And, you know, so those stories, you know, connect, connect us all. 
Yeah, no, and, and humanize and, and to be honest, I mean, we all pretty much, pretty much every culture in the world has a very strong storytelling tradition going back through whatever. So it's something that's kind of innate in us. Um, and it seems that that we've done, in many ways, we've done a good job in separating ourselves from some of the things that are innate to us that other people react really well to. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I'm, you know, I'm, uh, I'm, in, you know, I'm in Australia, and you, you got to look no further than, you know, Indigenous First Nations Australians that have been sharing stories for yeah. tens of thousands of years, um, because it's innate. It's because it's the way we pass on information. Um, and they've been, like I said, it's, you know, the oldest culture in the world, over 65,000 years old. Um, and we go into business and and decide, oh, no, let, let, let's not use that method that has stood yeah. the test of time for 60,000 years. Let's use acronyms or bullet points. That, that'll, that'll surely be more effective. Well, it's not. <laughs> That it, it, it's absolutely true. So, is there anything? Is there anything that uh, you know, as you've gathered more clients and brought in, is there anything that has surprised you, or the reactions that you you've gotten from from some new customers when they get into into this process? Is there anything that has surprised them? So, th there's there's a thing that surprised them. It's like the, the I think one of the one of the reasons I love doing what I do is you know I can go into a company, I can work with their leaders, you know, and there'll be some people that go, oh yeah, I really get storytelling, I want to learn how to do it better, which is great. But the vast majority of them that come into the training workshops are still going. I'm still really not sure how storytelling could work in business, or or why sharing a personal story of me growing up and you know getting in trouble of my parents for whatever how that would be relevant um and then i in the during the training program when they actually share their story with their peers the surprising thing it was like oh my god that was so i resonated with that so much i really connected with it i feel a closer relationship with the people that i just shared a story with and again this is this is an overly personal stories but they're sharing mm -hmm. something so that really surprises them and then when they go out you know i could get an email a month later or a couple of months later saying i shared the story with my team or at a presentation and i was blown away by the amount of people that came up and said oh my god I really loved your story I really resonated with it same thing happened to me and this concept of them being blown away by the impact where they, where they sort of come back to me and say you know this storytelling stuff really works I go I know I know it does <laughs> but for them when they experience it for themselves that is just gold I love it yeah, no, that's fantastic. And I, and I do love the point that you make that it doesn't have to be overly, um, you know, personal, it doesn't have to be extremely deep. And I think in some ways, um, it's often better when it's not, it's better when yeah. there's things that people connect with that's on a certain level, and people can relate to it, etc. So I, I think maybe that may be one part that makes people a bit reluctant about this because they think that oh do I tell stories so I have to open up and you know tell my deepest darkest secrets we're saying no you don't you just have to tell yeah. stuff that's you know stuff that resonates that's interesting that's connected to what you're talking about yeah absolutely it's one of it's one of the first things I say I go now let's be clear here this isn't about sharing your most deepest darkest secrets <laughs> fears and fantasies and and I say it as a bit of a joke but you can see half the people in the workshop go oh thank goodness <laughs> Okay, we're not going there. We're not going there, so don't worry. Yeah, you say uh, I'd have to I'd have to do that individually and charge you a whole heap yes, more. Yes, exactly, exactly. <laughs> well, listen, this has been fantastic. Uh, all, all of Rob's information is going to be below this video, including the links to to her books and the new book, Magnetic Stories. Um, but before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about yourself and what you do. Um, so yeah, so look, I, I am predominantly running, teaching people how to use stories more effectively. I've been doing it for 16 years when storytelling wasn't very popular 16 years ago. But um, yeah, I, I left the corporate world to do this. So I, I've sort of experienced firsthand the frustrations when it comes to, you know, leading people and communicating and influencing in employees and in customers. So um, I love what I do. I love what I do. It's... Um, COVID's been an amazing 12 months where we've had to go everything virtually, but uh, we're very lucky in Australia where we've started opening up a bit and getting back to some face-to-face -face and in-person training, which is, uh, which is always good, but virtual, virtual has been ama surprisingly, amazingly done well as also. Yeah, no, it is. I mean, I think it's it's definitely told people that you can connect and you can do things online that people perhaps didn't believe that they could um, before. 
Uh, yeah, so and I think, and I think it's going to be virtual. Virtual connection is going to be with us for a lot longer than we think because we've sort of realised that it actually can work. It can still work pretty yeah. well. Yeah. So it must have been. I mean, seeing as you, just the last thing I'll just say. I mean, seeing as you've been doing this for sixteen years, it must be, it must be amusing and maybe validating at the same time the fact that you know you've seen this kind of come into vogue maybe a little more over the last number of years so I mean you know you were there doing this a lot longer than um, than some people so it must yeah. be good for you to see uh, to see it finally you know getting the recognition yeah it is it's like you know when I started doing this 16 years ago people would seriously go storytelling in business are you mad what is that and now you know it's it's uh yeah getting the recognition is is um as a as a legitimate you know yeah. an effective an effective way to communicate and influence and lead in business is um is very nice to see now yeah, absolutely. Well, listen, thanks again. Um, fantastic. As I said, all of Raz's information will be below this, including links to the books. I will see all of you for another Expert Insight really soon. Thank you. Yeah.